you might be wondering why this thing is the way it is. It's got twofold purposes. One is, this is a very long stole made for a very tall person. <laughs> and it almost drags the floor if you hang it the regular way. So you can put it this way. And the reason you put it this way is because it makes the St. Andrew's cross. So it has a theological meaning as well as a practical meaning. So. That's the way the church is. <laughs> There's a line in the gospel that I think probably every preacher thinks about. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. <laughs> Why do you read that again? <laughs> I have many things to say to you, but you may not be able to bear them right now. Well, that's true. There are a lot of things to be said, especially on a Sunday like today. Because we celebrate the Trinity, we celebrate the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Did you ever see that movie, Four Weddings and a Funeral, and the priest calls it in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit? <laughs> Well, that's not a bad analogy. The <laughs> Holy Spirit is like a spigot. The Holy Spirit is there amongst us and in us and with us. So the Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. I don't know how many times I've been asked, and I imagine Blake, too, has been asked this, what's the meaning of the Trinity? Explain the Trinity to us. Good luck. <laughs> there are things in Christianity that are mysteries. And this is one of those mysteries of Christianity. How can God be one, and yet God sees God's self as three? Now, that would indicate that maybe we don't have a single God, and yet we do believe that there is one God in three persons. Now, how do you explain all of that? Especially on that level, a spiritual level. I mean, I can, I can explain three persons, one person, three personalities, because every one of us are made up like that. I am a father, I have two sons. I'm a son. I have a father and a mother. And there's a spiritual me that is who I am as a person. So that's practical explanation. But you add in the whole concept of the spiritual trinity, and it becomes a little more difficult. Sometimes I wonder if we haven't mislabeled the three persons of God. What if we named those three persons creator, teacher, and enabler? What if we named them those three things, creator, teacher, enabler? I know enable is a bad word in today's culture, mm -hmm. but it's not a bad word. It's a bad, well, no. That's another whole cool discussion. <laughs> but I think enable means some good things, enabling us to be who we are. So we have this creator. We have this God that has created all that is, even you and me. Wow, what a creator that is. Because he has created all of us as well as the world around us, and as well as the universe way out there. And you can't limit what God has created, because God is limitless. So we have the Creator. Then we have the Son of God, Jesus, who was sent into the world by the Father, the Creator, to 
engage humankind by teaching humankind what God has trying, been trying to say all through the history since creation. And so Jesus is our teacher. Jesus was brought into the world to face humankind and to say the line that I, I like, I still have many things to say to you, but you aren't ready to hear them yet. They're going to astound you. And I think we have to know that any teacher worth their, their teaching credentials is always going to leave you with wanting more. Always wanting to leave you to know more about whatever that subject is. That's what a teacher is called to do. That's why we talk about lifelong learning. We never quit learning. We learn every time we turn around. Every time we encounter somebody else, every time we read a book, including the Bible, every time we are looking around, we are learning something. One of the things that I always enjoy doing with my dog is taking a walk. Four times a day, he takes me for a walk. <laughs> and every time I see so many people out there walking, listening to their phone, talking to their phone, listening to music, ignoring the creation around. They ignore the fact that in the walks that we go on, there's things that blossom and bloom. There's noises to be heard. There's all kinds of experiences to be had if we just open ourselves to know that that creator has created something beautiful for us. And that's what Jesus keeps trying to tell us. And yet, overall, humankind doesn't learn that lesson well. Overall, we kind of ignore some of that stuff. Sad to say. But we do. But the other thing that Jesus does for us is redeems us. I've always had a problem with redeemer because I used to be a redeemer. I saved uh, green stamps. <laughs> I turn them in and redeem them. <laughs> some of you may remember that and some of you may not but redeemer means yeah Jesus is bringing us before God to say to us and to God these people are worth your redemption and your love and your grace so Jesus is the teacher as well as the redeemer so we have the second part of the Trinity. Then we have the enabler. The Holy Spirit is the part of the Trinity that enables us to be who we are as the people of God. Who we are, number one, as individuals, number two, as families, number three, as churches, number four, as community, and you could go on and make a whole list of what the Spirit enables us to be. Not to do, but to be. The Spirit enables us to be who we are. And that is a real blessing because that brings God's grace into us in a very real way. And uh, my belief is that the Holy Spirit, the enabler, dwells right in our hearts if we will only listen for what that spirit is trying to say to us. It's really easy to forget that that spirit is there speaking to us. I may have told you this before, but I used to be a hospital chaplain, and one of the areas that I covered was the psychiatric unit in the hospital. And the first time I had a group to talk to about spirituality, I walked in and I talked, I said, uh, you have to listen for what God is saying to you 
and you have to be aware of God's message to you. Everybody raise their hand. Is that the voice we always hear? <laughs> no. <laughs> I learned quick. That's one of those learning things that the teacher gives us. The spirit that we listen to the Holy Spirit in our hearts, not in our ears. And that means that we have to take time in our busy lives to listen to what that Spirit is saying to each of us. And we have to be willing to share with each other in families, in churches, in communities to grow and to touch base and touch the Spirit in each other. So, having said all that and having thought that through this week, that's as confusing as just saying the Trinity. <laughs> that can be confusing, but it doesn't have to be. The enabler, the spirit, will be helping us to be in touch with the teacher who enab enables us to be in touch with the creator who has created us. And all of that is important for each of us. So the next time you pray, I, I always advise people, when you pray and you're praying to God for something or about something or even thanksgivings to God, when you pray, stop for an equal amount of time and sit quietly and listen to your heart and what the Spirit is saying. It's awfully hard for 21st century people to be quiet. Do you know what it means? Have you ever experienced one full minute of silence in church? People go nuts with that. <laughs> it's uncomfortable. Most churches, when they say a moment of silence, mean 15 to 30 seconds. Because that's about all a lot of us can stand. But I'll, I'll share with you that through my experience, that silent time of listening to the Spirit is perhaps one of the most important times each of us can have. It's exciting and it's fun. One of the things that I think the Creator did for us is the Creator created humor. Just look around at us. That's humorous. Just look at each of us. I look at myself in the mirror. Do you remember that Saturday Night Live bit where the guy talks to the mirror? I am a wonderful person. I am a good person. I am a healthy person. I love that person. I love myself. <laughs> That's not exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> but all of those things affect us. All of those things touch us. All of those things have meaning in our lives. So it's exciting. The Trinity is an exciting concept. When we think about it and work with it and live with it and enjoy the Trinity, my firm belief is that religion, spirituality, church should sure be fun and not awful. And too many times I've sat through church services that were pretty awful. <laughs> and sometimes we just have to listen to the spirit when that happens. So the grace of God is with us all. This time, this day, we celebrate Father's Day. So we celebrate our creators. Not just the creator, the great creator, God, but all of our creators. Mother's Day was celebrated last month, and we celebrated mothers. 
those who nurture us, those who teach us, those who are with us. Does that sound familiar? Mm. That's almost like the Trinity. So where's the Spirit? The Spirit is in the community that is there for each of us to share and to grow in God's grace. It's exciting. And it's fun. And we dare smile in church. We do dare to do that. And we can even laugh in church. And we can even love in church. There's just all kinds of things we can do. Because of the Trinity. Of our Creator, our Redeemer, and our Teacher, and our Enabler, our Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.